here's the function 1 over 1 sine 1 pi x. And what this does is gives you a sine wave with an amplitude of 1, meaning it, it oscillates between plus 1 and minus 1. That's how far up and down it goes. And then this one happens to have a period of 2. So it does one full cycle after two units. Um, so that's this graph here. And if we then graph, the, well, the same function, only instead of putting 1 over 1 in front, we put 1 over 2 in front. Why, that's going to have half half the amplitude. So you see it's only half as tall. And then since we've graphed sine 2 pi x instead of sine 1 pi x, it's got half the period. So you can see it's oscillating twice as fast. So while the purple curve took two units to oscillate fully, uh, the white curve takes only one unit to oscillate fully. Well, if you add those two curves together to get this green curve, you'll get a, you know, you'll get a shape like this. And so again, what you're seeing here is the green curve is the sum of the purple curve and the white curve. If you add those two functions together, you'll get the green one. And so I'm going to remove this white curve now. And you can see what we're going to do is follow this pattern where, you know, here we're adding 1 over 1 sine 1 pi x plus 1 over 2 sine 2 pi x. Well, you could continue with this. The next term we're going to graph or next function we'll graph is 1 over 1 sine 1 pi x, 1 over 2 sine 2 pi x, plus 1 over 3 sine 3 pi x. We're going to add this third term. Well, if you add the third term, you get this turquoise function here. Uh, and then this is what happens if you get if you add a fourth term. We well, might think, well, what's, what's going to go on if I keep on adding terms? Well, a nice tight way to write that, since we're graphing, you know, 1 over 1 sine 1 pi x, 1 over 2 sine 2 pi x, we're basically graphing 1 over n sine n pi x and and just continuing to add on you know terms where the the one i've written above here would be for n equals four well so let's let's plot this one out well so this would be only the first term and you can see it's just overlapping the graph i drew before um there is uh two three four five six and we could keep going with this and you can see that the function is just approaching a a sawtooth like a zigzag um, so by graphing these um, sine waves an infinite sum of these sine waves which just starts out like this with this first sine wave by graphing that infinite sum of these things you can pr re reproduce the sawtooth or the zigzag function with these sharp corners um, and so here's going out to 50 terms so this is what's called a Fourier series and it's a set of sine waves that you add together with different little amplitudes um, that generate this function. So we'll see that an interesting thing happens if we repeat that same process, um, only now we will only keep the odd terms. So instead of 1 over 1 sine 1 pi x plus 1 over 2 sine 2 pi x, what we're going to do is repeat the that process but keeping only the odd ones. Um, so here's what happens if you use the first two odd terms, you'll get this function. Uh, here's if you use the first three terms, and here's if you use the first four terms, but again using only the um, odd functions of say 1 over n sine n pi x. Well if we push this to its limit, um, or at least say keeping the first, well many many of these functions, um, what you'll see is that this function approaches a square wave with sharp corners. Um, so just to make it a little easier to see, I'm going to disable these functions here, and we'll just show this one. Um, and so you notice that uh, here's that first sine wave. Um, here's the, the first two terms. And we can just kind of keep going, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we can keep going here all the way out to the first 50. And you'll see we get a really sharp square wave this time. So by keeping all the odd terms in this series, you end up with a square wave here instead of a instead of a sawtooth. And a quick example, we'll look at, uh, at what happens if you keep terms like, well, sine 1 pi x, sine 3 pi x, sine 5 pi x, again, all the odd ones. Only instead of the coefficients being um, 1 over 1, 1 over 3, 1 over 5, um, this time they're going to be 1 over odd numbers squared. So like uh, 1 over 1 squared, which is just 1 over 1, and then 1 over 9, because 9 is 3 squared, uh, and then um, 1 over 25, because 25 is 5 squared. 
and then the other little feature is going to be oscillating signs. So we have this negative 1 to the n minus 1 in the numerator here. What's going to happen is the first term, which is n equals 1, the first term would be negative 1 to the 0. So what's going to happen is you'd get a, po a positive 1 in the numerator, so it would be 1 over 1 sine 1 pi x, which is what is graphed here. The next term that we would add on um, would be negative 1 over 9 sine 3 pi x. And so what we're going to do is just kind of see what happens if you add terms like that. Um, and so I'll just kind of let this play out. And you see it approaches this sharp, um, uh, pure sawtooth, uh, zigzag type function. Uh, even pausing it, let's say right, oh, right here. Um, this already is starting to get sharper edges. Um, you know, here's your here's your pure, pure sine wave. Here is is adding to that pure sine wave uh, minus one over nine sine three pi x, and then this is adding. The next term would be adding one over twenty five sine five pi x and you already start getting quite a sharp um, sawtooth. So this set of sine waves will sum up to make a very sharp sawtooth function. Uh, if you want to explore this more, I encourage you to check out a little video that I'll link after that's to um, uh, uh, Dustin Sandlin's uh, Smarter Every Day channel. Um, where he goes into a little bit more detail um, about these Fourier series. But uh, now that you know how to graph sine waves, you can really do some powerful stuff.